I've been using Rust for a long time. I've loved it. I've been pursuing it in all the free time I have, which is fairly limited. And the Rust Foundation has just made the craziest proposal I have ever seen. Let's go through exactly what they mean. And I'm telling you, it's so nuts that they're willing to take you to court if your domain name has the word Rust in it. And that's not even the craziest thing in the document. All right, there's about 13 pages of material here, but I just wanted to really highlight the things that you should read yourself. So the first part is right here. They're gonna go through and they're gonna make a bunch of statements about how you can and can't use Rust. Here's one that really stuck out to me right away. If you show support for Rust on your personal website, you have to adhere to the policy. The policy is stated down below. If you do educational materials, you have to explicitly say before the first paragraph that you are not endorsed or supported or approved of by the Rust Foundation. You can use Ferris all you want. My sneaking suspicion is that they simply don't own the rights to Ferris. And so they're trying to be like, oh yeah, we're giving you use to this when actually no, they can't even take use from you. And so they have to simply just kind of say uncle. So let's get into the actual details of this. You cannot use any of the Rust trademarks, the marks in your Twitter avatar or name if you are a commercial product. So that means let's just say you had a hackathon, a hack week using Rust to rebuild part of your services and you change your Twitter handle to have your company logo and Rust. That is not allowed by the Rust Foundation. You are breaching their policy. You cannot change the Rust logo. You may only scale it. Any colorization of the logo is disallowed and they will be releasing their own colorizations. And that is that. You cannot have a crate with the word Rust in it. Rust is now gonna be reserved for the foundation. And I get this change, like there's part of me that wants to support it, but at the exact same time, do you, can you not use the word node in NPM packages? Can you not use the word go in a go package? It just is odd, right? Like this is an odd request. In fact, it's so odd, even Burnt Sushi, the man who created Rip Grip had no idea about this. And he's been a part of the project for a long time. This even caught him off guard. So this one definitely caught me by a huge surprise. They're even trying to trademark the style of their website, trade dress, as they call it. I didn't realize you could trademark a website design. I didn't realize you could buy a shitty $10 template and then attempt to trademark it. So under the foundation of the policy, this line exists, which is just nuts. You may not use or register in whole or in part the marks as part of your own trademark. Okay, I, I can kind of get that. Service mark, okay. Domain name, what? Company name, trade name, product name, or service name. So you can't have rustmasters.com. Hey, we are the master class of Rustations here to try to teach you something. Sorry, that domain name is completely wrong. And then finally, we get to this really interesting part used for non software goods and services. You can have apparently the word Rust on your website if it's not commercial. But if it's commercial, apparently it's gonna be pretty difficult because the word marks includes the word Rust. You can't have that as a part of your website. The website can't look like the Rust Foundation. Your logos have to be bigger than the Rust logos. So that means if you have like a learn Rust now and it's like your logo at the top corner, sorry, that's not allowed because it's not bigger. You actually have to put your stuff bigger and more prominent than the marks for Rust. Except Ferris, because they couldn't actually trademark that because they don't own it. You must state you are not affiliated with the Rust Foundation. All right, so now it gets even stranger. There's this term called Rust User Group, which is they want to support this thing called a Rust User Group, which apparently is a bunch of people emphatic about Rust. So say you have a Discord called I don't know, uh, you know, Rust enthusiasts, let's just say, or how about Rust hobbyists? Let's just say you have that. You apparently are not allowed to have that unless if you ado adopt and enforce a robust code of conduct that meets what they want, that the main focus of the group is about Rust software. Oh no, 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 no. It better not have memes as the main focus or just side talk, personal life talk or anything. Your Discord better be only about Rust, okay? primarily. 
this group cannot have any cost associated with it. So let's just say, you know, let's just say you're going to spend a thousand hours between you and a couple other people developing an amazing course and you start a Discord to go along with this amazing course teaching you Rust. Your Discord group cannot charge some sort of extra mentoring fee because that would be against the Rust user group policy. The group doesn't make a profit. I don't even know what this means. What do you mean not make a profit? As in like, are you talking about non-profit status, meaning that you just simply have to pay out all money made, all revenue made by the end of the year? Does, is that what you mean? And now finally, just the probably the most nuts of this all. If you hold a conference, here's the best part, okay? You must have it primarily discussed on, on Rust. It may not be for profit. You may not have the carrying of firearms. If you carry a firearm, you're copyright infringing. But if you don't, you're not. Sounds, you know, that's kind of weird that they can do user behavior on a copyright. Comply with local health regulations and have a robust COC. And of course, again, back to the domain name, any use of the marks. Remember, this includes the word rust. No, really, the, the word rust as part of a domain or subdomain. That's infringement! Then a bunch more legalese about, you know, through the document. And then we get to this last little part, which is just hilarious. Re-emphasizing inside their uh, policy, you may not change the logo except to scale it. You cannot add decorative elements, no eggplant emojis, no colorizing it. You can't even change the proportions. That also means you can't 3D distort it so I can look like I'm looking at it on an iPad. Me looking at it like I'm looking on a screen means that I have distorted it beyond the legal allowed amount they're prescribing. And you cannot combine it with another logo. So if I wrote a project that's half zig, half rust, I couldn't make an amalgamation of rust zig. That would be illegal. So what does this all mean and what does it mean for people like me or people like you? Uh, I'm going to be real with you. I really love Rust, the programming language. It has been one of the best languages I have ever learned. There's a lot of really great and helpful people in the community, and I have genuinely enjoyed my time here. In fact, I enjoyed it so much so that I have spent hundreds of hours making a course for front-end masters that's called Rust for TypeScript devs. I was even going to continue that and turn it into about a 40-hour course that I was going to put up, something like Rust for TypeScript devs.com, something like that. But with these new rules, I can't have that URL. I'm going to have to think about how is that going to be positioned on my website. I'm going to have to have all these disclaimers put in places that seem reasonable. There's all these just weird things to it that just really rob it of my ability to be a good content creator promoting good, solid Rust. And that's really what I want at the end of the day. And so I hope that everybody sees that, that they see that this is wrong. And then it's not good. It's not good for Rust itself. It's not good for the community. And it's not good for the people trying to lead the way. And lastly, we're with you, Rust Foundation team, in the sense that we're with you wanting your brand to be protected. We are on your side. We don't want people producing content saying they're a part of the Rust Foundation or insinuating it and not and producing low quality stuff. But at the same time, the way you're going about it, it's not right. Like this isn't good. And I genuinely hope that you listen to the people. The name is the Primogen.